It seems like over the past couple of years, the internet has collectively had this realization that something like 40% of 75, which might not be immediately obvious, is the same as 75% of 40. You can just switch which number the percent is on. Obviously, 75% of 40 is 3 fourths of 40, which is 30. So that means this number, which we're saying is the same, is also 30. And as a math teacher, I think a lot of us feel hurt that everybody is just realizing this. It's like, you guys weren't paying attention at all, were you? We told you this. It's called the commutative property. It's very simple, and there's nothing interesting going on here at all. But I guess, ultimately, if it feels like a trick to people, then it kind of is is a trick. But there might be something more to this that a lot of people still aren't seeing. The only reason that this is useful, 75% to 40, is because 75% we can view as a very familiar fraction, 3 quarters, which plays nice with 40. But if you're thinking about this silly trick, well, you're still probably not going to have much luck with 5% to 14. 5% isn't any fraction that plays nice with 14. 5% is 1 20th, but does that help? me? Not really. And if I switch the percents, I mean, it doesn't really change the situation. 14% to 5? This is no more obvious than this is. But if you understand the math behind this apparently secret percentage switching trick, you can take that math just a step further to make something like this as trivial as it should be. So why does the percent switching trick work? Well, let's break this down. 5% of 14. Of means multiplication, and percent means out of 100. So we could rewrite this as 5 out of 100 multiplied by 14. Then this 5 over 100, we could take that denominator of 100 out as its own fraction, and thus write this as 1 over 100 times 5 times 14. Something called the associative property of multiplication is also at play here, otherwise this multiplication of three numbers would not make any sense. But more importantly is the commutative property of multiplication, which tells us that the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So we could have 5%, like we see here, 5 over 100, or we could move the 1 over 100 next to the 14 and thus look at 14% of 5. Either way, you would get the same number. But like we said, neither of these percentages are super intuitive to us. Instead, notice what we can also do is just simple multiplication, 5 times 14, and then whatever that is will be over 100, that will be our percent. And if 5 times 14 is not super easy for you to do, then there are still more tricks your math teacher taught you that you ignored. Like the distributive property, 5 times 14, with the distributive property we know that we can write this as 5 times 10 plus 4 and then just distribute the 5 through these parentheses. You might not know 5 times 14 offhand, but I'm sure you know 5 times 10, and I'm sure you know 5 times 4. Clearly, this is just 50 plus 20, and so the product is 70. The distributive property is one of the first keys to getting good at mental math and breaking down non-obvious problems into obvious ones. Since I know 5 times 14 is 70, this is just 1 over 100 times 70, and so we know the answer is 70 over 100, or 0.7. So what's 5% of 14? What's 14% of 5? Each one is just 0.7. All we have to do to figure that out is ignore the percentage, just do 14 times 5, which is 70, and then divide it by 100, which becomes 0.7. Keep in mind, the original trick is still useful with friendly percentages, like 75% of 40. I maybe don't want to do 75 times 40, but I happen to know this percentage offhand, so it's still a little useful. But for those less obvious percentages, like 8% of 12, you gotta realize that all you have to do is multiplication and then divide by 100. What's 8% of 12? Uh, maybe I don't know offhand. What's 12% of 8? Uh, not totally sure, but I can do multiplication. What's 8 times 12? 
Well, it's 8 times 10, 80, plus 8 times 2, so 80 plus 16, so 96. And then I just need to divide that by 100, so it is in fact 0.96. Here's a fun one, what's 17% of 3? None of these percentages are obvious at a glance, but we're just doing multiplication. 17 times 3? Well, that's 3 times 10, which is 30 plus three times seven, that's 21. So add 30 and 21, that's 51. Divide by 100, it's 0.51. So percents are really quite easy, and it's all thanks to the commutative property of multiplication. Three groups of two is the same as two groups of three. And the commutative property is not to be taken for granted. Not every operation obeys this property. We know that subtraction, for example, is not commutative. Order definitely matters for subtraction. Even the associative property, which I only briefly mentioned earlier, cannot be taken for granted. It doesn't always work. It does for multiplication. It's the property that tells us we can group the x with the 1 over 100 in this product, or we could group the 1 over 100 with the y. Either way, we would get the same result. But even with an operation as simple as, say, exponentiation, the associative property no longer applies. In this situation, it definitely definitely matters how we group things. 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 is 8 to the power of 4, and it ends up being about 8,000. Whereas 2 to the power of 3 to the power of 4 is 2 to the power of 81. This is a huge number. It's around 2 times 10 to the power of 24. So many of these basic properties we learn and might think are trivial at first glance are a big deal, and they can be used to make some mental calculations quite a bit easier. There's even a great trick for multiplying by 9 that if you practice, you can multiply by 9 in a fraction of a second. It's called the multiplication table